Hey guys, welcome back to Mom Likely. Thanks for joining me today for today's video. We have so much to go over, over where I've been for the last couple weeks. I have been busy, like so much to go over, so much to tell you about. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna show you something today that you probably haven't seen, which is definitely somebody taking down a Christmas tree, you know, like right before summer. <laughs> Even in the Midwest, that's a little bit crazy cause like we're coming up on June almost, so. Um, that's pretty nuts. I did film this video a little while ago, so um, it did come down a couple weeks ago, but I still had it up for an excessive amount of time because I decorated it for Easter. Now, I was doing all that talking, waiting for summer, and let me tell you, things have just been so crazy. So, first of all, um, I cannot wait for summer to just hurry up and get here because I have had it. I have had it. <laughs> it's just been like, thing after thing this this move I thought was going very smoothly and then it turned into a big old pile of beep um we literally got sick with everything um Savannah she had mono the kids had lice I found fleas in the house there has been spiders crawling out of every crevice in this house um not to mention all kind of other little critters like roly polies and Oh, I'm just so over it. There was even, I even literally found a bumblebee like crawling near my laundry room area and it had like no wings or something. It was just insane. I'm just like, where did this come from? The bumblebee we did take outside, um, but the other things I've just been trying to like mediate and kill them. I even had called Orkin out here to try to figure out what is it that we can do to like get rid of everything. Um, so... I ended up also getting the stomach flu, so that was horrible. Um, man, I just feel like it's been just thing after thing and it's just been insane and the kids, they've missed so much school, you know, which really sucked. Here I am trying to like really stuff this in here. It was not working. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they like miss a bunch of school. Um, and finally, you know, I'm like, hey, my oldest daughter, I'm like, what the heck is going on? It's been like, 10 11 days at this point that she's been sick that i've been caring for and i thought like she was having some kind of like i don't know something the heck going on because like her throat was all messed up for so long she was like struggling and oh man it was just such a mess so i ended up taking her to the er which was great because ugh, let me tell you i don't want to see that bill but thank god i did take her and i was able to take her because um she ended up having mono so um, nothing crazy come from that. There's not really much they can do, but it was good to know. So she's not like rough housing around because there's some stuff that goes into that with damaging like your spleen. And it was good because she was able to get like some steroids to release some of the swelling because like her neck was getting big and stuff. So it was a whole mess. They were also throwing up both of the kids. Um, it was just a whole mess. <laughs> And then one of the nights, I don't know if it was sun poisoning or also sickness, but James woke up in like the sweats. His whole face was like gray. He was like, like on the floor. And I was just like super scared. Like what the heck is going on? So yeah, I don't know. This whole new environment thing, it's been great. But let me tell you, going into the summer, it has been extremely stressful and it made me want to be back in my old house in my little cocoon. But we digress and we progress right so that's all we can do um nonetheless still really grateful and optimistic on having a great summer but this last month has threw me for a really really big loop so yeah i'm, I'm stressing out just reliving it in my head <laughs> during this voiceover but yeah like it took us like two and a half weeks to get rid of the lice and then I, the dogs ended up getting fleas. I treated them. They need baths. Um, I've been trying to like get through cleaning the house. <sighs> Everything's just been crazy. And then to top it off, I ended up going to see my retina specialist. Um, I know I shared some pictures and kind of what was going on over on my socials. So if you're unaware, I have a rare eye condition called retinitis pigmentosa. Um, Oh, that's also another story that I need to get into. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that one a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so I went to my specialist. Um, my appointment went relatively well, but I found out now that I have cataracts. So um, it didn't, she said it didn't appear to be like anything excessive, but I have been experiencing blurriness. So 
Um, I think that's one of the one of the side effects of at least what started to remediate that. Um, I'm going to start wearing, I'm going to, I got to find like some different sunglasses, make sure I'm protecting my eyes even better than I have been. Um, which really sucks. Cause like I've been trying to get outside more, but I need more eye protection. I might even add a hat with my glasses just to be sure. Um, that's really the main thing that you can do if you have low vision with this, just because there's no, um, cure as of right now. I'm sorry if I'm coming off low energy guys. Cause like I'm doing this voiceover at night. So I really hope I'm not boring you, but yeah. So my specialist appointment, um, I was like extremely nervous about that. I was like, I thought they were going to be like, look lady, you're doomed. <laughs> you know, um, you always think the worst going into any progression or updates on, you know, illnesses or conditions you may have. Um, but I still tried to remain hopeful. The staff there was really great. They were kind and nice and um, they were empathetic during my visit there, you know, and understanding that, you know, this was hard news for me to take and that the condition, you know, isn't to be taken lightly, but there's a lot of um, at least resources for help and hope in the future. So that went really well. But I was reminded now that I do need to stop driving. So I will explain more of that story a little bit later. Cause I know I've been talking for like a hot minute. Um, so yeah, I'm going to grab a drink. I'm going to play a song and then I'll come back and tell you the rest of the story. Oh, here you are face to face in this trashy bar. Another glass and I am going places makes me laugh about the irony. So I know starting off when I started the video, I was a little bit everywhere, um, but I just wanted to kind of fill you in on what the heck's been going on. It's just been like sickness after sickness after new discovery here in this house. 
Um, and then we've also been trying to figure out the air situation because, you know, we don't have a HVAC system in this home and it's extremely expensive to put in because we have the four floors. Um, now the air that we do have here has been working out, but originally like we were trying to work that out. Um, but we think that just one more unit plus the unit we have will be able to cool everything down. Um, it should work out. We also have to trim back the bushes on the house to keep the spiders down. Um, now let me get back to telling you about my eyes. So the other major things that have happened to me over the last couple of weeks is I have dropped all of my um, arranged cleaning jobs that I do on the side. Um, all my calls that I've gotten, I've been telling people I'm not taking calls anymore. I did cancel the current jobs that I had lined up and I also left my part-time job. I know that I said I, le I left that job before too, but it was kind of like um, around last year, I, I did quit working that job, like the majority of the hours that I was working. Um, it just became kind of hard to do with everything. And then ultimately, like I was just helping out the family that I was working for and um, and then it pretty much just dwindled down to me just helping here and there for like a little bit of side money. I wasn't like actually working there. Um, but now recently, so I've had to quit doing that and I've had to quit all my cleaning jobs and everything. Um, and I also have taken up guitar. So I started learning how to play guitar. I wanted to put out some original songs, um, just something to work on as a hobby for myself and maybe, you know, I don't know, do something with it because I did put my, you know, in my emotions and my time into the artwork. So I figured I would share the creations, but it's been stressful because I've pretty much had to just let go of all my prior engagements and figure out like, how am I going to navigate my future? Um, it's been really tough. I'm not going to lie because like all the dreams that I kind of, I won't say all of them, right? But there's part of my dreams that I thought that I was going to be able to move forward with and the reality is is just that I can't I can't do them because of my eyes um and just because of other decisions that I've made in my life there are just things that I can't do at this point um pertaining to like the things that I wanted to do so there was really no moving going forward in anything that I was doing because at this current time, I just don't have the capacity to be able to take it to the next level. Um, apart from, you know, what I do here at home. And as I've even said, um, I don't know, sometimes I grow tired while I'm working because this job is on the computer and I stare at a lot of screens. And sometimes that's really hard because my eyes are messed up and blurry and you know, staring at the screen all day kind of strains my eyes and makes them tired. So I really am on the hunt for an editor. If you are an editor, um, if you know an editor, maybe you could send me an email. I have my email stuff always in my socials, how to contact me, um, as well as in my descriptions. Um, but I've been considering on getting an editor because at some point I am going to need somebody to add to the team and they are going to have to edit for me if I even want to continue to do this because you know I don't want my independence and my ability to be able to make money and provide for my family and have things for myself be ripped away from me so I'm trying to create options um I just feel like I'm so abled I don't want to be disabled uh to the point where like I'm dependent on the state or government and honestly I don't even know what I would be eligible for to begin with um I just don't feel like it's gonna you know match up to what it is that I would like to do uh the girls are still young there are so many activities going on we just moved and it just you know it's just like it doesn't seem realistic for me to only just be a stay-at-home mom um I never really have been, you know, and it's kind of like I'm being forced to kind of do that for now because I need to figure out, well, that's the other part of the story. So at this point, I'm considered legally blind, which is why I also need to stop driving. Um, and so having your transportation independence ripped away from you is, 
you know, kind of a really big deal because not only can I not do quick things, but now I have to make arrangements with somebody else or for my kids, you know, for us to get around, you know, we have activities three, four times a week. We have grocery shopping. We have school pick up and drop off. We have, you know, want to hang out with, want to hang out with friends, you know, me getting out in the week, me going to do runs for people and help others. And it's like, that's not going to happen. Um, and also, you know, I have to figure out how am I going to get us everywhere because also Ubers are expensive. Um, I'm still paying on my lease. Um, there's so many financial factors even still that go into having this condition because I'm not going to be able to drive. Um, also not to mention everybody has a life around us and I don't have many people in my family that can help me. So there's that aspect of it too, where it's like, this is very, we, I already kind of live like kind of like an isolating life as it is. So it's going to be very lonely not having my transportation to be able to get out of the house. You know, I'm going to have to call somebody if I would like to get out of the house to, you know, <laughs> go do a quick Tim Hortons or a Starbucks run and, you know, maybe go look at the store, or go thrifting or take the kids for a quick ice cream. If James isn't here and he works so much sometimes where he is gone the whole day, sometimes he's gone for 16, 18 hours at a time. Sometimes he's not able to even come home overnight. He's here the next morning, has to take a long nap before he can interact with us because he's been up for so long at work. He has a field service job and it's very, it requires a lot of time. So with that being said, because I'm the sole like caretaker of the house and the kids and running, you know, our schedule in our lives, it is very mentally kind of debilitating to think about, you know, the fact that I'm not going to be able to be so gung ho in those areas. I'm going to be highly dependent on somebody to get us around if I would like our life to continue um, the way that it is now. And that is my plan. So I don't know what the freaking plan is yet, but you know, that's what I want to do. And I got to figure that out. I got to figure out driving options like for transportation. I got to figure out. I don't know, maybe get grocery delivery, I guess, again, just in case I need like something quick or something. DoorDash is ridiculously expensive. And then I have to figure out how to get rid of my car. Um, so Savannah, she can't drive for another two years. So in two years, she'll be able to like help a little bit more, you know, with like the things that we need or maybe, you know, getting her and her sister to and from activities they want to do. Um, she can definitely do that. But you know, for the next two years, it's going to be, you know, a pretty big deal trying to navigate this when I'm going to be like alone doing that. So, um, I don't know, kind of heavy, but that's kind of what I've been dealing with right now and what I'm facing and what's coming up. So, I mean, ultimately I'm full-time YouTube now. I'm not doing anything else. I'm also, um, needing to figure out and dictate a plan on getting a video editor. I need a chauffeur for transportation, as well as, you know, the health aspect where I also need to work out, eat better, so I can preserve the vision that I do have, so I can continue to get along um, as normally as I can. I also did sign up for genetic testing, so they'll maybe be able to see like which gene is causing this for me and in the future there might be treatment options I don't know as well as just for my kids to have a genetic trail um, of information because I have literally diddly squat on my family so I really wanted to do it for them and I also signed up for cane training so I will learn how to use a white cane this summer and also I've been struggling because you know eventually like so at this point now, I am legally blind. Um, I know it's really weird to hear that because like I'm doing all these things, but blindness is a spectrum. So I can see some stuff, but I can't see as good as other people. So there are a lot of limitations that are placed on me um, just physically because things are dangerous for me to do because I don't have my full vision. Um, and not only that, but legally, they're not safe for me to do because I don't want to harm myself or others from trying to be arrogant 
um, you know, thinking I need to prove I can do things like other people because the reality is, is just that, you know, as much as I want to be just like the next person, I'm, I'm physically not. Um, and it really sucks because, you know, I'm really hard headed in that way as well. Um, and at this, at this time, you know, I'm still able to, I still have my independence. I'm able to get around on my own. And in all honesty, if there was an emergency, I would definitely get behind that wheel and drive. No, <laughs> Um, but seriously though, like it's just a matter of it's precautions at this point and it's just not what's set up through the standards that we've been living in society. Now, if I was just on a dirt road somewhere or something with my golf cart, I would probably still like ride that. I'm still going to ride my bike. Um, I don't ride trails. I can't, it's hard, difficult for me to ride trails, but I can ride in that area, like near the house. Yeah. So basically a lot has been going on i just been hit with everything over the last couple weeks and it's just been like one thing after another so i'm hoping i just want the girls to just hurry up and get out of school i'm sorry that this wasn't more positive although i don't think it was necessarily negative i'm just trying to fill you guys in with what's going on um it's just been really crazy and sometimes there's just really so much going on and it just is what it is and i'm just learning to Uh, I can't even say that I'm learning to embrace anything because I'm not embracing anything. I'm just learning to do my best and get about the day. And I'm trying to stop creating problems in my head that aren't there um, just for me to create a problem and just actually navigate the things that I can control. So don't focus so much on the things on the outside that I can't control and focus on what I can control. And most of that is just you know, fulfillment and enjoyment in the small things and all things that I'm capable of doing. Um, Because at the end of the day, I rather always have what I have versus being having less because we, we never want less, right? Um, So always be fortunate with where you are. And that's just how it is. That's just life. And if you're anything like me, then you also just refuse to let life beat you down And we may struggle and we might have to cry and crawl our way out of things, but we're not going to lay there. We're not going to give up. We're not going to roll over. We're just going to walk one foot in front of the other, one step at a time and do our best and take in around us what we can. That's what we have to do. And I hope that for you as much as myself, that we can just get through things each day, one day at a time. And that is good that is enough. Um, and I, you know, I wasn't very bubbly today and I talked this whole day, you know, and it's like, I just had to fill you in with what's been going on with everything. Um, and I've just been, you know, really boggled down with reality. Um, but this is real life, you know, and I say it all the time and I mean, it just is what it is. We got to do what we got to do. And I hope for your sake, too, that you'll be motivated still by what I share. You know, we're still going to have a lot of home content. I'm still going to do the thriving, the three hour thrive. Um, We got to focus on our food and our health. I also picked up guitar. I started writing songs a few weeks back. So I have a lot of songs I would like to be able to share one day um, trying to learn guitar just for like a hobby, you know, an extra stress relief. I've also been reading I just completed um, Mind Shift. It was a pretty good book. The very last four sentences of Mind Shift, I think, were the most profound for me, um, which I read before I started the book, and they were still my favorite line in the book when I was done. As well as I started an audio book. It's called The False Prince. I've been really loving that. And I heard about a story about a blind prince, something Kingfall or something. Are you familiar with that? I really love fantasy and I love um, like fairy tale stories, like fantasy fairy tale type deals with like castles and royals and kings and stuff like that. So that's kind of my jam when it comes to stories.
Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I will be seeing you in a couple days with the next 3 hour thrive. If you did miss the last one, I'll put it up on the screen for you here so you can check it out in the meantime. And thank you so much for listening and tuning in and sticking this out with me. And I'll see you next time. Bye.